Mm -hmm. seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Okay, now we go on. Oh, we've already covered the background. Now we're going to come back to the modern. He said, now make sure your speech is seasoned with salt. Oh, what is he saying? What Paul is saying is that you have to be careful in how you talk to one another. Then he gave this emphasis in the upper verse. He says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. What he means is what you say in the church and how you talk to each other and how you speak to one another and how you treat one another, the people on the outside they can tell if you truly are of Christ. And a lot of times we're hindering the folk from without because when we at home with everybody else, we sitting up there, uh, well, you know, I just don't like the way the pastor preached this morning. Well, I think he, I'm driving on home, well, I think he, he raised too many offerings. You see, and what you do is your speech, it tends to craft the mind of your young folk. And your speech, it tends to affect the wife. And she feels like, well, you know, I don't like that that was said. And, and your speech in the home is crafting and affecting people's lives. Clap your hands and say yes. Not only does it start in the home, but it goes beyond the home. It goes to the people around you. Your speech starts infecting other people. Your speech starts creating germs in seeds in other people's minds. Now, y'all know as well as I do, and I'm, I'm going to close this out here in just a few minutes because I know y'all ready for the next serve. But now, watch this. What you say can create an atmosphere where it becomes a turnoff to other people. Now, see, the emphasis is, is that how we act in the church is going to affect the sinner. So that's why we got to be careful and season up. Watch what you say. Paul said, watch. Watch what you saying. See, we so easy to jump up and focus on negative things. Well, you know, this ain't being done right. Well, I don't like the way the worship was. Well, I don't like. Well, why don't you focus on some good stuff? What about all the, be careful what you say. Let your words be seasoned with salt. See, it's easy to get the fish in. It's keeping the fish. But it's how other folk, are, how they act and what's past that I'm brought them in. Clap your hands and say yes. It's how you're going to conduct yourself. So he said, let your speech be seasoned with salt. See, a lot of times we say, well, I don't know why. All these people come to the altar, but you don't see a lot of them. You know what that proves? It shows that we need some seasoning. It shows that somebody is so focused on my position, what I got, where I am, that you're not making a new person feel comfortable with being in your environment. Now, pastor done made them comfortable when he done greeted them in the hall. But then when they see you and, and your attitude and uh, I am moreover, brother, it's my seat. Oh, there's no seasoning on that song. And then you wondering why the souls is like a revolving door. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not speaking. This is the wrong church. I think I'm. I think I'm past I'm preaching the wrong church. <laughs> and, then, and then we want to paste the sign on Pastor Samples back. It's his fault. There all must be something wrong with his ministry. You see all them guests, they come every Sunday. They pile in there. And then afterward, some Sundays you don't see the results. But the issue is, is that it takes more than Pastor Sample. To bring sheep in. Sheep begot sheep. Not the shepherd. It's y'all that birth and nurture and groom and bring in and encourage and build up. It's not the pastor. It's you. I'm closing, Pastor. I know you got another sir. But 
But what he's really saying is this. When you watch how you say things, see, how you say it denotes healthiness. In other words, he's saying be healthy. God didn't want germs on his meat. Don't bring me no offering all germy. And y'all can't understand why God would feel that way. Don't bring me nothing with no germs in it. I don't want no infected meat. And pastor don't want no infected sheep. Because infection is contagious. And if your attitude is wrong about the church and you get amongst other sheep, you start infecting their mentality of how they view the church. And then we want to call ourselves, well, I'm a minister. I know you're a minister, but you have to be you have to be careful with your mouth when you a so-called minister. Well, you know, Pastor, I'm a minister too. You know, um, I'm, I preach like you do. But God, Paul said, guard that mouth. Sometimes shut your mouth. Somebody say, shut your mouth. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm closing now. I'm closing. But I'm going to show you a small lesson. I'm about to sit down here. Yeah, because I know y'all ain't going to want to have me back no more. But anyway, the thing. <laughs> What God is saying to the minister is that the ministers, and we all are ministers, but what he's really describing here in the sense of speech and how you talk and guard yourself and watch what you say and how you do it, what he's really saying is this. I want you to have a little PR about yourself as a minister, as a member in Holy Tabernacle. PR? What do you mean, preacher? public relations see when you watch how you say it and how you do it and and how you know you choose your words and and you know how to be positive instead of negative that's called PR that's called public relations and so public relations um let me just read it because I'm going what is he talking about? okay let me it says in Webster's Meridian College Dictionary it says that public relations is the methods and act activities employed or the art or science of establishing or promoting a favorable relationship with the public it's promoting it's an art what i described about pastor see if we ministers with pastor sample we ought to take on some of them personable traits we are we ought to take you know that that, that got my attention Y'all don't like what I'm saying. You see, if you're a real minister, all right, then don't you got some of that too? The right stuff. Get, 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 get some public relations about yourself. You a minister, but you drive people away. <laughs> Clap your hands and say yes. Yeah, you ministering all right, but you infecting people with wrong attitude. And but you say I'm a minister. Well, I don't have to really keep the sheep like that because I'm not the pastor. That's his job. I'm just going to be on recess. <laughs> but what God desires of us is for us to have some public relations. Season your attitude. Season your mind. And get committed about the church inside and out. That you want to establish an image that is positive. In other words, number one, stop focusing on the negative, majoring in minors. Oh, say, I see a spot on the carpet. I, I, I see she missed a key when she played. Oh, no, he, he, he sung. That wasn't the right chord. Majoring in minors. You're wasting your time with the fullest things instead of majoring in what's in. Ain't no souls coming in behind your life, but you can put. Yeah, that wasn't said right. Y'all done picked out five things for me this Sunday. See, one, two, three, Prophet Hill missed it there. He mispronunciated something and he walked out in the audience too much. <laughs> Matron in minors, but I'm a minister. No seasoning. Get some PR about yourself. God bless you.